We're going to cut the individual rates from seven brackets to four. Simplification. No business of any size, from a Fortune 500 company to a mom and pop shop, to a freelancer living from gig to gig, will pay more than 15% of their business income in taxes. Less than 24 hours after once again promising he would build a really nice wall on the Mexican border and hinting how illegal immigrants in this country would be happy to be rounded up and sent back, Donald Trump played everyone brilliantly in going with his tax plan that has a lot of people thinking, maybe this guy isn't so bad after all. Wait for it. This revolutionary tax plan may be nothing more than what we've heard before, repackaged and polished nice and shiny for everyone to fall in love with. So let's polish this one up a little bit more and see what happens. She talks money and more as a CNBC contributor and best-selling author. Carol Roth is back in the house, joined by chairman of the board of the patriotic millionaires who advocate for higher taxes for rich Americans, Morris Pearl. I want to thank you both for being here. And Carol, I'm going to begin with you. Let's start right there, the New York Times. Here's the headline, Trump tax plan, a triumph of showmanship over common sense. Everybody liked it the first few seconds. Now they're saying, we've heard this all before. It's got a couple of nice things, but this is nothing really new. Your take. I will tell you one thing that is very new and that incredibly impressed me was his understanding and focus on small business. We always hear lip service given to small business and then we always hear about we need to reform corporate taxes. Most small businesses pay at the individual income tax level. Donald Trump understood this. He addressed this. And I think that this is really exciting for 28 million small businesses across this nation, Ed. Here's the other side of it, though, Carol. This, and, and we've had a lot of experts talk about it, saying that this really does not raise the revenue needed to pay the nation's bills. It just won't get it done. So how do you then take care of that Grand Canyon-esque hole there that you still have when you start cutting taxes? Well, I think there's two things that need to be done. Certainly, we need to grow the pie. And by repatriating some of the cash that's sitting overseas that corporations have, by encouraging more corporate business here in the United States, by encouraging small businesses, that grows the pie. That's one way we do it. On the other side, of course, we're going to have to get tough and cut out some of the waste in government. And I think it's a two-pronged approach. This is the first piece of it. And it certainly makes business and logical sense. This is how business people attack these kinds of problems. All right, Morris Pearl, let's get to you now because let's get a little tough here on your side. Patriotic millionaires, you're basically already slamming away at this tax plan. What is it about it that you don't like? And there are a lot of people out there thinking, well, you must not like the fact that as millionaires, you won't be making as much money. <laughs> no, not at all. We actually want to grow the pie also, but we believe that growing the pie means giving American consumers money so they can participate in, in the civic life of our nation. We don't think that lowering the tax rates on the wealthiest among us from over 39% to only 25% is a good idea at all because that makes more of a burden on the lower income people. We don't believe that the top, most richest among us and the highest incomes need a tax break. Yes, there's certain things we like about his plan, like getting rid of the loopholes for carried interest and a few other things, but overall it's lowering taxes on the wealthiest, and that's what it is. But, Carol, I heard you come in the background here because I guess that's part of it, too. People saying that, well, the rich are going to make more money here. Uh, but my question is for Morris. He said that by lowering the tax rate, which is obviously the, the tax bracket, not the effective tax rate, which we know is different, but by lowering that upper bracket, that there's more of a burden on middle Americans. I, I, I don't see how one thing has to do with the other. Morris, I got about a minute left. Do you please answer? Well, because in order to make the revenue that our country needs to pay for things, we need to collect taxes. And if we lower the taxes on the wealthiest, that means that more of the burden, more of the percentage of the, of the government's budget will be paid by the lower income people. So and you want to pay more there. taxes, no, well, though, Morris. Well, well, but, that's not, but that's not necessarily true if you grow the pie. It depends on the, how much you grow the pie. Just because but, you lower the, the tax bracket on the rich doesn't mean that the middle class have more of a burden. I think that's a false giving, argument. Giving the wealthy more money is not great growing the pie. Giving the richest among us more money will not but make them not, spend well, not, more you're money. You're not giving them more money. It's their money. It's, you're not giving them more money. It's their money. You're not giving them anything. <laughs> Taking, taking, having them pay less taxes and share and shoulder less of the burden 
will not do anything to increase our economy. It will make them wealthier. I think what we we're into here is that, and I'm, I'm unfortunately out of time here, but I think what we're into here is this is a great idea, perhaps, but there are still a lot of things that need to be fleshed out in a lot of this, whether you're a rich American, whether you're a poor American, but I got news for you. If you don't make a lot of money, it's good news because I guarantee everybody I've talked to who doesn't make uh, uh, under over $50,000, they're going, yes, Mr. Trump, give me less tax to pay and I will be happy. Morris, unfortunately, we're out of time and I know we're going to get you in the studio one day. Let's dig into this a little deeper very soon because this is not going to go away. I appreciate your time. Morris Pearl, Carol Roth, thanks so much for joining us. This story is also not going to go away. Stick around. The political animal takes the center ring next with a Rubio rise, missing Clinton cash, and Ted, Ruse, uh, Ted Cruz with a shot at his own Republican base next on the hard line.